since I've had this old decrepit um, metal mailbox that is all black that people kept hitting when they backed out of my driveway. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get an actual nice wood post and, and put my, and just put my mailbox on it. And I was just going to, you know, repaint my, um, my mailbox to match my house. And one of my friends who was helping me put the post in is he was like, why aren't you pouring on this? You should pour this. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to put on the post, but you know, that's a great idea. Maybe I'll put it on the mailbox. Welcome to the Fluid Arts Podcast with your host, Keevan White, where we dive into the wonderful world of fluid arts, including acrylic pouring, alcohol ink, resin art, and more. In this podcast, we let talented artists share with us their techniques, inspirations, and tips for creating amazing fluid art. Whether you want to earn a living making art or improve your work, this is the podcast for you. So sit back and relax as we take you on a journey to learn more about this exciting and engaging art form. Welcome to another episode of the Fluid Arts Podcast. I'm your host, Keevan Jr. And today I have a very talented artist by the name of Tracy Nelson. And what Tracy's gonna be doing today is walking us through how she created a pour on her mailbox. So it's really interesting. If you wanna see the photo of the creation we're talking about today, you can just click on the link in the show notes and we'll be able to put it up there so you can see it. So without further ado, Tracy, welcome to the Fluid Arts Podcast. Hello, thank you. Yeah, um, I know that we spoke earlier, but you're coming to us from Virginia. Where at in Virginia are you coming from? Uh, Richmond, Virginia. Nice. And um, have you been able to, you know, connect with some people out there in relation to, to art? Um, you know, I, I, I don't really know too many people except for my girlfriend that showed me how to do the um, pouring. So I I don't really have too many friends that are doing this specific art, but I do have some talented friends that um, do some different paintings and um, other creative outlets. Okay. And you said your friend showed you the, the, introduced you into this art form. How did you kind of figure out about the the acrylic porn Facebook community? Um, Well, it was, it it was funny when she showed it to me, I immediately just got obsessed, addicted. <laughs> um, and I think it was like probably the next night I had gone out and got all the supplies and had been pouring in my dining room for like maybe a week until I realized that that wasn't going to work out very well. Um, still have some paint stains there now. And um, and so I, you know, kicked my son out of this spare room that he really wasn't using and um, but made my own studio and have just been at it ever since um i love it i'm obsessed with it okay and yeah that's nice i think <laughs> the next day that's that that's pretty fast yeah <laughs> yeah i didn't waste any time when i want to do something i do it I, that's for sure okay awesome so since that has happened and you know you've gotten more involved with the acrylic porn art form i'm sure you, you've tried a lot of experiments the one we're talking about today right is your mailbox. Is that your mailbox? Yes, it is. I've had this old decrepit um, metal mailbox that is all black that people kept hitting when they backed out of my driveway. Um, So I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get an actual nice wood post and, and put, and just put my mailbox on it. And I was just going to, you know, repaint my, um, my mailbox to match my house. And one of my friends who was helping me put the post in is he was like, why aren't you pouring on this? You should pour this. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to put on the post, but you know, that's a great idea. Maybe I'll put it on the mailbox. So I still spray painted my old one, but just cause I, you know, knew it was going to take some time and I wasn't really sure how this was really going to turn out. And, um, and I went out and bought just a cheap, uh, it was probably like $15, um, like grayish colored mailbox and, um, primed it. I think I used like Kills um, primer, spray primer, and, you know, taped the areas that I didn't want. And it was, it was rather frustrating while I was pouring because I, you know, it's when you're, when you're so used to doing like a flat surface, it's so easy. But when you start working with surfaces that are, you know, oddly shaped, (laughs) um, rounded in one section, and and you had two sides, it was a little challenging. I must have poured about 
I don't know, probably four times on it. Um, just because the, as the, and I think I, it was also realizing like maybe the, the, the mixture of the um, paint was not the right consistency. So it was blending too much or it was creating colors that I didn't really want. Um, but I, I was, I was actually happy with what, you know, finally turned out after kind of cursing at it for <laughs> quite some time. Um, I think the, the one thing I definitely recommend um, with doing one is to do it on Lazy Susan so that, and I don't think I did that, but so that you can kind of turn it and watch both sides because that was the challenge too. I was just looking at one side and then I get that one straight and I look at the other side and I was like, oh, that doesn't look right. It doesn't look the same. So, um, and then I, I only poured on the, um, the rounded arched base, you know, the top of it. And then I just went back and painted the backs and the front, but I totally recommend like spray painting or, or painting the sides that you want first solid and then taping those up and, and going back and doing your pouring. But some lessons I learned, um, but it i'm very excited about how it turned out when and i have to say too once the colors dried um i was like oh, i don't know if i like it it just doesn't really pop but once i pour put um and i just used minwax um varnish once i put that on it it just really made the colors pop out and it looked actually gorgeous so very happy with it and have gotten yeah a lot of compliments even uh here in the neighborhood and online with my friends yeah, so I was just about to ask you that uh, about the how do you kind of weatherproof it? But before I get to that, I wanted to backtrack yeah. into uh, just so I can make sure I got the, the the story right. So you said that it was kind of blending in your old mailbox and everybody kept backing into it. So you wanted to make it away. So it was like a little, stand out a little bit more. And yeah. so you bought a new one. And then that's where you started to pour over that one, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I bought a new, I bought a post and painted that white, so it really stood out, and then um, was just gonna, you know, originally just had my old mailbox that I spray painted red um, that I installed on there, but um, bought an, a whole nother one to, you know, just went to Lowe's and bought like a little 15, I want to say it was like $15, um, and it was like just a gray one, but they have a, a variety of, of colors, but I wasn't worried about the color because I knew I was going to want to put primer on it anyways before I poured on it. Um, and then, yeah, so that's, that's, and, and, and I, I didn't want to spend a lot of money too, because I wasn't really sure how this was going to turn out and if I was going to like it. Right. I like to call it an experiment going right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So exactly. with the Lazy Susan, I know you said you didn't use it, but what did you use? Like what surface did you kind of have it sitting on? Was it like a regular canvas? I have like a dry rack, like a dish dry rack that I bought from Walmart. And that's what I use for, you know, some of my pours. It's a, it depends on what I'm pouring on. Um, uh, but for, for this one, I, yeah, I just put it on my, um, my dry rack. And I have like a, I either put down like uh, trash bags or tarps. Um, depending on the how big the project is, <clears throat> and I also have like a a silicone mat. <clears throat> excuse me, that I love. Um, it's just the challenge is it it works best if you can wait for the paint to dry, <laughs> and then it cr easily crumbles off, and that can take a while sometimes for your puddles to dry. But um, I I think that's the uh, that's a good point though that that the one thing that that can get frustrating with this this type of hobby is I feel like some of it can be so wasteful so I do find ways to um avoid like having to you know um go through a lot of wasteful things like cups and stuff like that actually my mom uh <laughs> she saves these little yogurt um cups because she goes through yogurts like every day and so she cleans them out and saves them for me so I can use to um do my pouring for some of the smaller projects Okay. But yeah, this one I just did on a rack. But like I said, I, I think it would be better to do on some sort of uh, turntable, Lazy Susan type um, platform so that you can, you know, move move around and watch both sides. Okay. Now you you touched on the consistency of the paint and how you you would have done that differently. Can you, one more time, you said that you would have spray painted the side and you would have, what was it that you would have done differently? Um, I would have, yeah, I would have 
just spray painted the um, front and back because the the open the door and the back side were I just wanted those solid. <clears throat> Excuse me, and everything I would have just either whether you're going to paint, um, have a solid paint for certain spots or spray paint it. Um, I would just do that first and then wait for all that to dry, tape it up, and and leave the the box itself um, open to to pour on. Okay, so touching on yeah. the varnish, what yeah. did you end up doing to make it kind of weatherproof so that like when it rains and it storms and whatnot that it won't just evaporate? <laughs> yeah, well, time will tell, but um, I, for this one, I used the, um, oh, what is it? Helmsman uh, Minwax. Um, it's just that, uh, uh, God, I wish I had it with me, but it's a, um, just a little container of, of that that you can get from Lowe's that normally you would put on wood because um, I've used that for, for other projects out, outside. I, I, did, I did this beautiful table with, with resin, but I tell you, it, I, I'm just not a big fan of resin. It's, it's not fun to work with to me. And, and my whole thing is that I hate the finishing part. I really do. I just like to pour, you know, so it's like when I get to that spot, like, oh, I got to finish this now. Um, I want it to be something easy. Um, so I like stuff that goes on a little easily. Um, I feel like resin just, you just never know how it's going to turn out if you've mixed it perfectly. And um, I don't know, it's just, to me, it just seems finicky, at least with what I've worked with, the type I've worked with, maybe it's the the, the brands that I've used, but um, so far, I, I haven't been. I like how it dries sometimes, but sometimes too, you don't want that, um, you know, real glossy finish. So that's what I liked about this because I knew too it was going to be in the sun, um, and there really is no resin that protects from the UV. So the um, Minwax does. Got you. So the Minwax Hellsman, I think it's like it's it's similar to like you said when you put on wood, just for the viewers to kind of get that picture. Yeah. Like a, the same container that a primer would be in, right? Right, right, yeah. Nice. Okay. I think, it, well, you can buy it um, in a spray can. I think I have a spray can of it too. Um, but I use the the liquid form that, you know, usually like I'll just pour it on and kind of either brush or um, sometimes even just kind of um, wipe it on. Like I have a little wiper that came with my resin. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so you touched on it taking some time to dry how long would you say that once you had it how you liked it that it took to dry you know I think for this one I honestly only gave it like two or three weeks um for most of my projects I try to um I, I try to actually um give it like you know like 30 days at least um just because I've had some <laughs> situations where I pour um the finish on or put the finish on and um, it tends to crack just because um, the paint hasn't cured. Um, but I think this one, it, it was thin enough. Um, I think my paints were thinner than I normally would do. Excuse me. And so it, um, it dried a lot faster. Okay. So you touched on the reason why you chose the colors was because of the colors of your house, right? Mm -hmm. So what about the, 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 the way that you, created like what medium did you use what are some of the supplies oh, yeah so I always use um uh flow troll I love that um solution to mix with the paints um I use a variety of paints though um and that can be the challenge too is like you know and even in some the the same brands and the same type of paint you can find that the consistency can be like way different so it's a lot of like you know, and, and a lot of my projects, I like to just like have a night before to mix all my paints um, because sometimes I feel like that can be the big hardest part of the project. Um, but I kind of, and I, I feel like I watched somebody's video once and they said, um, you want it to be like kind of the s consistency of like um, uh, hot honey, melted honey. So I, I try to use that as kind of my, my guide. So I'll, you know, mix them up and and maybe even let it sit for a second and mix the next one and then come back to it and see if it's the consistent consistency that i like um but it also depends on too what you're doing you know on some of the techniques you want it a little more uh watery or in other instances you might want it thicker so um it's just it's always hard to to guide on that but i, I like the kind of the warm honey 
<laughs> um, I even see it every time I think about it. I see the video uh, that I saw of that. I don't know who had that, but it definitely um, stuck and, and helps me remember um, how, to, how to gauge if I've got the right consistency for most of my projects. Yeah, I think it's a great kind of rule of thumb for starting out. Now, when you, you obviously try it out, you said it took you a few times, you probably learn like, okay, in this one, I need it to be a little bit thicker. I need it to be a little thinner, that sort of deal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, especially like when I'm doing like the Dutch pours and you're, you know, trying to manipulate with air, you want it a lot lighter than um, some of the other um, pours that you do. And for so the learn that the hard way. <laughs> and for the cup that you use, well, well, let me not assume, but what did you use like a cup to, or did you use the squirt bottles or how did you do that? Yeah, for this one, I just had them all in separate cups and, um, and then just poured um, individually. Like, so I didn't even mix them ahead of time, which is probably good because they were mixing so quickly um, as I um, pour them as they ran over. Um, but yeah, it was just, like I said, just kept pouring. <laughs> I must have kept pouring about four or five times, maybe more um, before it, you know, finally was like, okay, if I mess with this anymore, it's just going to look bad. So um, turned out good. And yeah, it was it, part of it too, was because like, I, you know, I had it in my head. Um, my house is, um, is white with black trim and a red door. So I was like, okay, well, let me do white, black, red, and um, gold. But for some reason, like, you know, in certain spots, it like mixed and made like a lavender color. And I was trying to get rid of that because it was just standing out too much. And so, yeah, next time I got to think through a little more of, of how I um, how I pour the colors on together, you know. Right, right. I, I think with every, you know, piece that we make, there's always that self-critic that, that you're talking about right there. But on the, in mm -hmm. the group, there was a lot of people that kind of reacted to it were you surprised by the amount of attention you got I I was I was I mean you know I knew I, I know I had seen some other um videos you know because I that's one thing I do too before I do a project I do tons of research um to see what people how people have done it you know watch videos <clears throat> excuse me and even research like the finishes because with some of these projects like my uh, this one in my table I knew it was going to be outside so I wanted to make sure that I got, you know, um, the best um, varnish um, for the surface. Yeah, so it definitely made the colors pop. I agree with you on that one. So that's the research that you do, I'm sure pays off in a number of ways that you may not even be able to recognize at first. But um, with this one, right, is this, uh, this one was made for you specifically, but have you had any requests to do any, do any for other people or have you ever thought about selling like mailboxes? I have actually. And, and yes, the, the first person that commented on my um, post, uh, I think it was on Facebook. Um, she was like, Hmm, <laughs> I think I might want one of these too. So, so yeah, I'm sure if I, um, you know, once I get through a lot of my own projects right now, I've been, like I said, kind of self focused on um, things around my house um, just because uh, I mentioned to you earlier, I was selling all these paintings and looked around and I'm like, I have a lot of bare walls. <laughs> I should keep some of these. Um, so just being at home with the quarantine, you know, it, it's, it's actually become a joke um, with my friends. They're, they're kind of concerned for like my dogs and my son because, you know, any, any surface <laughs> that I can find around here, I'm, I'm pouring on. Um, but yeah, I would, you know, I've considered, I, I think the, the other thing there that just concerns me is making sure I, I get the, um, I'm able to ship it okay and, and get the shipping charges and, and um, packaging and everything um, straight before I, you know, list it on my Etsy site. Yeah, okay. Well, that is, that clears up a lot and, and tells us where pretty much to start if you, if the viewers listening are thinking about trying it and um you know if you decide to want someone to do it for you such as tracy then you could go to well where should they go if they want to see more of your work or you know request for them to for you to do one of their mailboxes yeah yeah totally um um pretty much on uh facebook instagram and etsy as um poor girl rva so it's p-o-u-r-g-i-r-l 
R V A for Richmond, Virginia. And that's where you can find me. Okay, nice. And you said you have an Etsy page as well? Yes, I do. I do. I don't have too much on it right now because, like I said, I've selfishly been working for myself. <laughs> but I do have, I think I just posted three more. So I have like four um, paintings right now that I posted there. Okay, nice. Well, yeah, I think that is the the method that you chose with the mailbox. I think that not only tells the neighbors that you are a dedicated fluid artist, <laughs> but I also think it works for the, the, the ultimate purpose, which is to make sure they stop backing into your mailbox. Yeah, I know. Um, part of me has thought of putting my um, poor girl RVA logo or something on my mailbox, you know, <laughs> just to use it as a promoting um, technique. Right. And especially if they like were to, somebody would have ride by and they say, oh, this is a mail amazing mailbox and they take a picture, they could already have your, your logo on there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate your time stopping by and wanted to make sure that we get this message out so it can continue to inspire those in the group and those listening. And um, you know where to find her if you wanted to hear more. But you know, with that being said, Tracy, thank you for stopping by the Fluid Arts Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. See you. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please like and share with your community. And please let us know if you have any suggestions for artists you'd like to hear on our show. This episode is sponsored by AcrylicPouring.com. AcrylicPouring.com is the leading fluid arts website which provides fluid artists around the world the inspiration and tips they need. If you are new to fluid arts and want to get started now, then go to AcrylicPouring.com to learn the five fundamentals of making beautiful acrylic pours for free. Also, join their Facebook community, where every day artists just like you are sharing their newest creations that just might end up on another one of these episodes.